I will explore some of the hottest business and economic topics. The thing is, at least it's in the Philippines, because there's always going to be a conflict at some point between commercial considerations and social considerations. How does the crop insurance extend to the credit as well? Whenever a bank lends to either rice or corn, by law, that loan must be covered by crop insurance. Good evening. Welcome once again to Eye on Business. I'm Ben Kritz. Well, about this time last month, uh, about a month ago, everybody was breathing a sigh of relief that the month of January, which seemed to be so eventful, had finally finished. If you remember, we were dealing with a volcanic eruption and you know, various other problems. Uh, the beginning of the coronavirus epidemic was a big one. It seems, though, that February has managed to top January as far as unusual events. And so tonight, I want to kind of take a look back at the month that we just had, um, if we can try to sort all of that out and see maybe if we can get some idea where we're going to go for the rest of the year. So for this evening, one of my very good friends, a good friend to all of us here at the Manila Times is, is here with me tonight, Mr. George Chua, who is the president of the Phili Philippine Federation. Federation of Industries and the president and CEO of Bayan Automotive Corporation, which is the sole distributor of Bayek automobiles here in the country. And that's kind of the first topic that I want to talk about because in just recently, about a week ago, we got the somewhat surprising announcement that Honda Motor Cars Philippines will be closing its plant in Laguna, which will result in the loss of about 380 jobs. Um, well, George, you're kind of an you know, up-and-coming scion in the auto, <laughs> auto industry here. In the, in the Philippines. Uh, what was your take on the, on the Honda announcement? Well, first of all, Ben, I'd like to thank you for inviting me on your uh, show, Eye on Business. And it's always a pleasure for me to see you and be here with, uh, with you guys at the Manila Times. So first of all, um, I think that the, these are business decisions driven by market forces, driven by particular situations that the specific companies are involved in. And sometimes, uh, because of the influx of uh, uh, many competing brands that are, uh, that are we might say, um, upgraded in terms of the quality that mm -hmm. they have, particularly coming from uh, China and the other countries, Sometimes it's very difficult, or it's very difficult to uh, uh, justify having a, an assembly operation, especially if you don't have the volumes. Mm -hmm. So I believe that maybe it was a more of a business decision on the side of Honda to uh, just stop their assembly operations for some of their models. Okay, um, in the wake of Honda's announcement, the DTI secretary, Lopez, raised the issue of possibly having a protective tariff on imported vehicles um, because as it stands now it is it is cheaper in most cases mm -hmm. to import the car than it is to assemble them here um, your business in particular there is no bayek assembly in That's this correct. in this country so that would affect you and a lot of other brands as well um, so what do you think of that idea well um, I have to put two hats on here uh, in the sense that I do have representation uh, for the industry as president of the mm -hmm. Federation of Philippine Industries and as sitting uh, in the boards of both the Chamber of Automotive Manufacturers and the Truck Manufacturers Association so every time we put uh, let's say uh, protective measures or tariffs, then uh, it's only logical for us to expect that other countries uh, will also do the same mm -hmm. uh, to countermand whatever protection measures that we're trying to institute. And that could be counterproductive as well, particularly uh, when we are trying to build up our own export industry uh, right. through, the, through the CARS program of which uh, Toyota Motors uh, through the Vios and Mitsubishi Motors 
through the uh, Mirage G4 uh, is uh, part of and mm -hmm. are, they are now building up the local manufacture and assembly of these vehicles. So I think that that's not going to be uh, very productive. What we should try to see is we should try to see what we can do to help specific assemblers. Uh, obviously, the, the utility costs that we all have to face, uh, both in the commercial and the industrial sector, I guess including the consumers, uh, we do have the highest cost of electricity in the ASEAN region. Mm -hmm. uh, we do have uh, high cost of water which uh, the president uh, took notice of. And uh, we do have problems with our uh, transport infrastructure, uh, the port facilities uh, and how long it takes and how much it costs us to uh, ship in and out of the Philippines. Mm -hmm. um, speaking of the water and electric situation, that is something else that's come up this month. Um, we can kind of switch gears a little sure. bit here, but we've been warned already uh, in, in the space of about three days, we got warnings for both the impending electric shortage, um, which is supposed to hit us about April, and at about the same time, we can probably also be expecting water shortages. Um, now, as you said, the president has taken notice of the water especially, and we've talked about that subject quite a bit. Um, but um, the electric is, a, is another problem. Um, do you have any suggestions of, of how to do this? Because what, what I see and what I think a lot of the public sees is that every year we are having this same problem. And every year the government addresses the problem. So, oh, okay, we're going to have a problem. We're going to do something. But they come up with stopgap measures to get us through the tough season and then Come this time next year, we're going to be right back where we started. I mean, how is that affecting, you know, manufacturing, you know, from your, from your, your position as president of the Federation of Philippine Industries? You know, how, how what, what, are, what are your people saying about this? Well, well, obviously, it's a deterrent for the manufacturing sector mm -hmm. when your uh, cost of utilities, particularly the cost of power and water, is very high uh, in comparison to your... Uh, regional competitors. So what really should be done is a review of the rates that are being charged. Mm -hmm. If you think about it, just going through the most profitable companies in the Philippines, the utility companies are very high up on the list. Yes, they are. So that means to say there may be uh, mm -hmm. making undue profits. Maybe you have a little room yeah, to uh, be so, flexible. So, so, uh, a thorough review should be made by the regulators, the ones that uh, uh, administer the functions of these utilities, the ones that set the rates, and uh, understand uh, why companies that are being guaranteed certain uh, markets and certain uh, rates are making so much money as compared to somebody who decides to go on business on his own. He takes a risk on his capital without having any guarantees on a market or on the price. Mm -hmm. So uh, I, I think that would be the very first step to see if the, the rates that are being uh, uh, used are indeed uh, rational and fair. Mm -hmm. okay. That's a very good point. <laughs> Let's take a short break. Okay. And we're back. Uh, just before the break, you were talking about uh, you know difficulties in trade, uh, you know, which is which is kind of a normal situation here that that they need to address long term. But this month in particular, we're also seeing a lot of difficulties uh, due to this coronavirus yes. 
uh, outbreak. Um, how has that affected affected business here in the Philippines? Well, I've heard that because of the uh, slowdown or uh, some of the quarantine procedures that they have instituted in China, some of the factories have not resumed normal operations. Mm -hmm. And of course, uh, since a lot of our raw materials and finished products do come from China, uh, the uh, supply chain uh, is being disrupted. Mm -hmm. So that obviously affects our own uh, sales, manufacturing processes here in the Philippines. But I would like to add that we shouldn't be really, really uh, uh, disproportionately be panicking over the whole thing because mm -hmm. uh, from what I, I understand, uh, there has only, there has been close to 3,000 deaths. Right. Okay. Um, so what is that in the general scheme of things uh, when, when the global population expands by, I think, 220,000 people a day? Mm -hmm. uh, it doesn't seem to be too much. But of course, uh, we do need to take the necessary precautions. And uh, I believe the Philippines has been on the ball on that one in that it has uh, uh, prevented uh, flights to and from certain uh, countries mm -hmm. that they believe could uh, be harboring uh, the infectious diseases right. uh, that could adver adversely affect us. But uh, I don't think the people should be panicking. Uh, and, and it's a good thing that I've noticed that uh, not too many people are wearing masks anymore because there has been studies that shown that maybe that is uh, that is not necessary yeah. and that might lead to more complications mm -hmm. yeah that's what I've heard too that it really doesn't help uh, maybe psychologically um, in terms of business now the the other day um, I think it was yesterday there was a uh, there was a report from the BSP that they are considering uh, some regulatory relief for banks that may be affected by you know by the coronavirus um, their customers you know obviously uh, in you know in some difficulty because of that and they had also mentioned the volcano you know because there's still a lot of people that it, you know are, are trying to recover from that um, in terms of in terms of business um, do you think the government should take any any steps to kind of because we're, we're already hearing um, the economic activity in China, at least temporarily, has Slowed dropped down. by like half um, because of their strict measures to, to try to contain things. We've seen the financial markets all over the world, you know, in, in complete turmoil. Um, the, the PSE just recently had its biggest drop in over a year because, you know, supposedly because of the effects of the coronavirus. So do you, th do you think the government should be implementing any kind of um, stimulus, maybe we could call um, it, or should at least be thinking about doing that? Well, I, th I think the government has certain programs that they should try to keep on track. Uh, for example, the... Uh, push for electric vehicles mm -hmm. I think is a good thing because it helps us with our own problems with the pollution which I last heard that according to the uh, uh, health agencies we are over the limits with respect to what is acceptable as pollutants level mm -hmm. and one of the biggest contributors to that is of course the uh, vehicles the right. public transport vehicles and it doesn't take too much imagination to understand that the Philippines, particularly in Manila, if you're coming from the outskirts heading towards Manila, you can see this uh, dark haze mm -hmm. over, over the metropolis. No? So I think that uh, uh, pushing for certain programs that they've initiated, uh, particularly on the electric vehicles, such as financing, the financing program or part of it, which is uh, part of the uh, P P public utility vehicle modernization program right. uh, we need to get that going because it in itself is a stimulus uh, in that not only are we going to be uh, lessening the problems with pollution but because of the additional impetus of being able to provide new jeeps uh, or re re uh, modernized uh, jeeps into mm -hmm. the market 
then that, that should help the economy as well and make up for whatever shortfalls we might have from the situation with uh, other countries outside of the Philippines. Mm -hmm. um, now, let's get back to the auto business for a bit because as you know, I mean, I, I, I kind of uh, have a special interest mm -hmm. in that and you do too, obviously. Um, but it was a pretty tough year last year for the for the business here. I mean, I think uh, overall it was something like 3% growth, which is basically flat. Um, although you, you did pretty well. Um, you know, some of the some of the major brands surprisingly had had kind of bad years. Um, there's two there's two parts to this I, I want to sure. ask. First of all, the infrastructure program. Um, do you think that will help the, the the automotive business here? And the reason the reason I'm kind of focusing on the automotive business is because it seems as though this is the industrial sector that you know the government, at least at one time, was looking at as the area for growth. Right. Um, which makes sense in certain ways because it has very long supply chains, employs a lot of people, and uses a lot of resources. So it's a good a good area to start. So do you think the infrastructure program, first of all, is on the right track um, and will help the you know help the auto business here? Um. First of all, the problem, most of the automotive uh, uh, demand comes from the, the metropolis, mm -hmm. uh, Metro Manila and other urban centers. The situation is that we have a problem with the traffic situation, and I don't think anybody, including the government, should be blaming the automotive sector for that problem. The problem is the lack of infrastructure which has been uh, neglected, neglected for, for many, many years. Mm -hmm. And uh, if you think about it, if I had a choice of taking a subway like in a city like, uh, you know, metropolis like Singapore or Hong Kong, well, certainly I'd, I'd do that. I mean, I'm sure you would too, mm -hmm. except that uh, there are no viable alternatives for us and right. that we do not have a mass uh, transport system that can be safely used by the general public. So I believe that the situation with the automotive sector, uh, while it's being uh, uh, mislabeled as the cause of the traffic uh, problem, uh, will continue because people need to get to their place of work. Right. They need to bring their kids to school. They need to do their errands. So you give them little choice but to uh, make use of other means, which includes uh, uh, grab or we, which includes the, the, those um, uh, motorcycle ankas and things mm -hmm. like that, including uh, the private ownership of these vehicles. So it, it's a welcome relief once we have a lot of these uh, uh, roads that are being built that will cut through, let's say, from the South Superhighway to the North uh, right. Expressway. So those things are something that we look forward to. But it's also a good thing that the government has taken cognizance of the long overdue fact that we shouldn't be allowing tricycles on the uh, national roads. Mm -hmm. And in certain situations, not only do you see tricycles, but you see pedicabs. And mm -hmm. of course, uh, given the limited number of lanes that we have, we can only go as fast as the slowest vehicle on the road. Mm -hmm. right. and, uh, and, and that and really is a problem because mm -hmm. not only do they use the roads, uh, to to move, but they also use the roads as their terminals or as their parking spaces and things like that, which adds to the aggravation. Okay, let's take another short break. mga isyung pinag-usapan, mga palitang laman ng pahayagan, impormasyon dapat yung malaman. Tatalakayin, pupusisiin, at hihimayin ni Mario Garcia kasama ang kanyang mga panauhin sa harap ng bayan. Face Off! Okay, and we're back. Okay, uh, just before the break, we were talking about uh, the infrastructure in relation to the auto industry. And 
as I was saying, you know, I, I think the I think the auto industry is important, partly because you know I I have a personal affinity for it, but partly because it is a good way to build up uh, the industrial sector in this country, which is way behind the times, and that's why it was kind of disappointing that Honda was moving out, but. The auto industry in general is going through some changes. Um, the, the second question that I wanted to ask, you touched on electric vehicles. Mm -hmm. um, and that is, that is something, that, that is a, another, another area where they really could build up some manufacturing very quickly here in the country. And as a matter of fact, I know there are already some you know some electric vehicles that are being produced here um, one uh, suggestion that I've heard in talking to other people and I've kind of thought of the same thing too is what could the government do specifically to kind of to kind of boost to boost that industry um, you know what sort of incentives and, and things like that would help um, you know what what would be like the you know the Federation of Industries wish list, you know, for, you know, for some real support to, sure. to, to build up a, a manufacturing sector. Well, well I'm glad you brought that uh, uh, issue up. It's, this is similar to what we faced in the telecommunications sector decades ago, whereby we were so far behind in terms of landlines mm -hmm. that when the cell phone alternative came, became available, we leapfrogged, we totally bypassed the uh, landlines, right. and everybody now has one or two or you know, more cell phones uh, to totally bas uh, bypass landlines. And uh, essentially the way I look at it is that uh, the electric vehicle uh, coming into the Philippines could be something similar in that we can bypass the traditional uh, processes of uh, using the internal combustion engine, gasoline, mm -hmm. and diesel-fed uh, vehicles. I'm, I'm quite familiar and, uh, with one of these uh, BOI-registered EV uh, vehicle manufacturers, which is Tojo Motors, uh, which oh, was right. founded by uh, my yeah. dear friend and uh, business associate, Ralph Legaspi. Mm -hmm. And the technical parts and the technical aspects of that has already been uh, resolved in that they do have fully functional class 2 type uh, e-jeepneys that are replacing the traditional uh, polluting uh, jeepneys. Mm -hmm. The problem that they are facing right now is really the financing in the sense that the cooperatives that buy their vehicles takes a very long time for the government banks uh, uh, to, to be able to process the uh, release of these loans. So what happens is that uh, companies like uh, Ralph uh, Tojo Motors is unable to go full steam ahead mm. because they, they do have limited capital right. and they won't be able to keep on uh, selling the units if they don't get paid for the units that they've sold already yes, so exactly. so it just limits the ability for the expansion and possible mm -hmm. uh, uh, growth of the electric vehicle market in the Philippines I think the government is also in the right track in that it's exempting them from uh, from uh, the excise taxes right. particularly the battery electric vehicles I'm not talking about hybrids but the mm -hmm. purely electric vehicles and it's also a good measure that the government is keeping the tariffs on the imports of uh, uh, electric vehicles so that it gives some chance for the local vehicle manufacturers and assemblers uh, to be able to uh, develop mm -hmm. because if if again if we see the situation whereby there are no tariffs for electric vehicles then we will never have an electric vehicle uh, right. uh, we'll industry here a manufacturing we'll, we'll get swamped because yeah. uh, i think uh, now does the um, uh, d does the 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 tariff exemption that we have right now for cars in general with thailand and indonesia that's been a, that's been cited right. as a problem right. they come in free yes. um, does that does that 
apply to electric vehicles from there, or do, are they keeping the tariff on? I, I on think they are keeping vehicles? the tariffs on that. I, I, you, we can do a fact check on that. Yeah, it's something the, the I would have to look that, uh, at. The figure that uh, sticks to my head is thirty percent mm -hmm. uh, thereabouts. So, but there is no excise tax on the sale of electric vehicles. So, right. Uh, <coughs> but that's fine because the, because it, regardless of whether the whatever the source is. Electric vehicles uh, are really more expensive than the traditional vehicles yes, due to true. the additional cost of the batteries. Mm -hmm. yeah. And and here in this country, well, I think I think the fact that there is no excise tax on electric vehicles would really would really appeal to the consumers because that has been a that as you know there is a certain. There's a certain range of uh, yes. in that market that theory, where, yes. yeah, where, where I mean, the people who are buying the real low end cars, it doesn't affect them too much, and the people who are buying the real high end cars, correct, they are kind of immune to you know the expense. But the people that vast middle, they do care about the excise tax, and that extra, that extra expense makes a big difference the, the, to them. But they don't have options for electric vehicles. Well, that's true because the problem is also uh, multifold. First is that it's more expensive mm -hmm. even with the zero excise tax it still is more expensive right. because it's about uh, double the cost so even if you remove the impact of the excise taxes it would still be much more expensive. Mm -hmm. Next is for consumers it's a question of uh, charging stations. Right. Because if I want to go let's say to Baguio or some other out of town trip then I'd have to plan it out way ahead to see that I can get home or I'd have to find the charging station where I can charge my vehicle when I get to my point of destination. Mm -hmm. So it, it does have its own uh, nuances that needs to be uh, fixed before the electric vehicle uh, uh, industry uh, takes hold. But in the meantime, we are doing the correct thing in that we are focusing on the B2B uh, applications of electric vehicles mm -hmm. in that the manufacturers, distributors, assemblers are selling it to the cooperatives who have their own transport routes, who have their own franchise with the uh, LTFRB. Mm -hmm. And be knowing what their routes, routes are, uh, then they can have the battery swapping stations yeah. within that truck. Yeah. Yeah. They, they can, they can, they, yeah. they, they can they, live they, within they can, their own right. they ecosystem. Can, they, and yeah. they can buy at volume. They, yeah. you know, the way, the, the, way way the cost norm, doesn't make as big a difference. And the way it normally though. works is that the, to make it viable, the batteries are not sold. They're rented out. So oh, effectively, okay. you're just buying the vehicle. And the battery rent, you can think of it as buying diesel fuel or mm -hmm. buying gasoline you know so that is your yeah. cost of fuel yeah, but then here yeah. we have another problem is we are still paying very high electric costs but it's even still cheaper yeah, it's, still it's still cheaper, cheaper it's still cheaper but, it's but about, it could yeah. be much it, it, cheaper of course yeah. of course because the the cheaper it becomes the more readily acceptable uh it will be by the mm -hmm. uh by the by the by the businesses in the the transport businesses and the consumers. Yeah, and because yeah. I know, especially for especially you know in a in a B two B setting, you know, cost of cost of ownership, oh, yeah. cost of operation is a big consideration. Be because that's the know. whole reason for their yeah. existence. They're in business, so mm -hmm. I, you can't be in business yeah, if you're not. It's not, not just make the vehicle money. itself. Yeah. It's yeah. how much is this going to cost you to yeah. use? But but the yeah. other big benefit of this is that it will remove the pollutants in the air, mm -hmm. which will hopefully reduce our healthcare costs because these pollutants cost a lot of people to have um, lung problems, asthma, right. and, and other yeah, various it's, it's diseases, which includes cancer mm -hmm. because uh, the, the particulates that we have are carcinogenic. Right. Right, and I know I know that's been a that, that's been a, a, a big thing for you for several years now because mm -hmm. you were one of the one of the first to bring in the you know the all Euro four spec yes. vehicles. And Our first uh, vehicle was at least a Euro four already, uh -huh. even though the regulations were still allowing Euro two. Yeah, now now they the regulations I think have caught up, and I think some of the vehicles are caught up. Mm -hmm. um, um, how soon are we going to see like Euro five? 
or well, Euro some 6. of our vehicles are I, Euro I five know some already. Some of them are already, um, uh, but it's not. That's not the, the standard the, yet. So the far. love affair of Filipinos with diesel, I believe, uh, will eventually have to change because uh, Euro six vehicles, as you can imagine. Uh, will become uh, more difficult to comply with and uh -huh. that has led to certain major brands uh, caught uh, cheating, cheating yes. in terms of uh, yeah. their emission uh, measurements and things like that mm -hmm. to comply with the uh, Euro 6 requirements. So I, I think that uh, electric vehicles will be a nice solution to that if the government were just to uh, help out in terms of providing the financing, releasing the money on time and putting more money so that it becomes more available to more people. Mm, I see. Okay. Let's take another break. Thank you. The Philippines has been around for centuries. Malayo na rin ang narating natin. But back then, the way of life has been mostly analog. Did you know that you need to take a boat from Cavite in order to go to Manila? Yes, ganon ang takbo ng buhay dati. You need to send a letter to the United States? Sure, pero aabutin ka ng isang buwan bago matanggap ang iyong liham. Kailangan mong tumawag sa bahay o sa iyong kaibigan? Many ways to do that. Pwede ka maghulog ng tatlong 25 sa payphone or use that vintage rotary phone na most likely 6 digits lang ang landline number. Forget about email. Telex at fax machine ang modes of communication for business. You want to listen to that one song of your favorite band on repeat? Sorry, pero kailangan mong i-rewind ang cassette tape. Buong album naman ang kailangan mong bilhin kahit iisang kanta lang ang gusto mo doon. But things change and we as a race progress. The world is getting small. We are now a traveling population. Why? Because travel is now cheap. Our friends are across the world because our form of communication is now borderless. Time zones are now meant to serve as a guide and not as a limitation. We can buy things from the comfort of our homes. Nasanay na tayo sa convenience because why not? It is the price of development and a glimpse of our future. Have you imagined the future? How do you think it will look like? Driverless cars? Yes, autonomous driving will happen. Robots replacing low-value processes done by humans? Tama ka dyan. Paying for your groceries using digital currency? Very realistic. Materials being 3D printed instead of ordering? Yes, we are indeed a progressive race. And technology plays a vital and crucial part of it. How will this affect our lives? Kailangan ba natin itong matutunan? Mahirap ba itong aralin? Or kaya naman? How can our nation take advantage of these advancements? All of these can be understood and learned. Tayo ng matuto para umunlad. Nandito na ang Abante. Progress through technology. Okay, and we're back. So, let's... Uh Let's look, uh, we've been looking back a little bit, let's look ahead a little bit to uh, what, um, what, 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 is the, uh, what is the business sentiment for the rest of the year? Um, have, have, you know, have your, you know, your colleagues in, in various industries, have they kind of processed what's been going on these first two months? I mean, is we're going we're gonna to have a, a chaotic quarter, I think. Right. But, but uh, how are they looking at the rest of the year? Well, well first of all, um, uh, we've had a very uh, rocky start uh, with the situation with the volcan uh, Taal volcano eruption. We've also had uh, the coronavirus uh, problems that have caused uh, uh, supply chain disruptions. Mm -hmm. And these are things that will probably be uh, in the near term horizon be present. So it's very hard for businesses to have a gung ho or a very uh, positive attitude right. towards the year and on top of that we're implementing additional tax measures uh, such as the uh, fuel increases right mm -hmm. so we're feeling the impact of that at a time when the global economy seems to be 
it's heading pretty, south. Yeah, it's pretty shaky right now. So, so, uh, so I think uh, businesses are approaching things with some degree of caution. Mm -hmm. We've also heard uh, uh, the president air his views on certain uh, uh, big groups, big conglomerates, uh, which uh, makes uh, businesses think twice in uh, in how how to deal with government, which mm -hmm. which is not necessarily a bad thing. Mm -hmm. In that uh, maybe some uh, one-sided uh, decisions will not be in favor of the private enterprise all the time, right. to the detriment of both the government and the consuming public. So maybe those are not bad things, and but it it does give pause for businesses to to really see what directions they will need to take, mm -hmm. particularly in dealing with government, to make sure that everything is above board. Yeah. Now, is there um, is there a uh, how how should I put it? Is there a point of no return? Um, you know, as it as it seems right now, we've basically lost a quarter. Um, you know, unless unless the coronavirus goes away and things improve very rapidly this month, um, first quarter is gone. It's not as bad as it was last mm -hmm. year because we were dealing at that time with the stalled budget, mm -hmm. you know, which really put a damper on things. But now we've got new problems. So is there is there a point of the year where I mean, okay, businesses are approaching things cautiously now, you know, but w will they get to a point, you know, say middle of the year or whatever, where they're just going to say, look, let's just hold the fort for this year and, you know, put aside any plans we had for expanding and things like that. I mean, you getting any sense that, that they're worried um, about it? Well, well, first of all, even at the start of the year, they already put a uh, downgrade in terms of the growth of the Philippine economy, mm -hmm. uh, seeing what has been happening and the introduction of new taxes. I think that uh, in general, this is not going to be a banner year for the Philippines, but maybe it, it's not so bad because we're still looking at the positive growth. And in certain sectors of the global economy, they're really looking at a contraction or mm. you know, a big decrease in, in their growth rates. Uh, it's too early to say, but maybe if we see certain big developments like um, uh, you, you know, uh, reductions in, for example, the utility costs, uh, the opening of these major road infrastructure networks. Mm -hmm. uh, all of these things will contribute to uh, a better economy in that it will reduce the costs and it will reduce the time for people to uh, do a, go around doing their business. Mm -hmm. So I think it's still not too late. Uh, some of these measures are planned to be open within the year and I think the coronavirus uh, will uh, blow over uh, they have there has been some signs of uh, slowing down right. in terms of new infections and in terms of the death rates so that's a good well, sign at least in China yeah. it yeah. seems to have gotten loose everywhere else yeah. but as you said before I, I think that's also it was also a very good point you made let's put this in perspective right. there are seven billion people in the world sure. and three thousand of them have died from this virus you know which is very tragic for those three thousand people and their families okay. but that is still a very small number Percentage. compared to how big the problem mm -hmm. could be. Mm -hmm. um, one last thing um, sure. that I want to ask about: uh, it, it, it's it's going to the issue is going to come to a head here very soon. But they are still working on the corporate tax um, reform package. Um, what uh, what 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 is the what, what is the take of uh, of the industries on that? Well, well, uh, we are in favor of a corporate tax reduction to put us aligned with the rest of our competing ASEAN neighbors. Mm -hmm. uh, but what we are afraid of is that uh, they're going to say, "Yeah, we take we give you these corporate tax breaks, but then again, we're going to charge you more for this and that." So similar to what they did with the train uh, law, uh, they gave up like 60 billion and ended up charging 200 billion. Right, they so, reduced so the personal it, income it, tax, it, but then it, these they, other things They got these it other somewhere else. So we know that we, mm -hmm. we will pay for it in one way or another. Mm -hmm. And I believe that the government should seriously look at 
uh, like what most of us would do if we don't have enough money, we'd cut costs or, you know, watch what we're spending on. Mm -hmm. And I don't think the government has done enough of that. Right. I don't believe that spending, spending, spending will dig us out of a hole. Uh, it has to be proper spending mm -hmm. that has uh, a good purpose and a good return. Right. It's not like, uh, uh, as we have heard in some of the news items, that um, hundreds of millions of pesos used for intelligence uh, from the intelligence funds are uh, yeah. unaccounted for and things like that. Yeah, that's so, not so, good so, at all. So maybe things like that uh, can be avoided by having uh, uh, maybe less money for intelligence funds, which tends to be a, bot a bit more gaseous. Yeah, yeah, there's, uh, that's that's a good point too. It seems like that seems to happen a lot, even right. though they are trying to fight corruption and, and account for things better. There still always seems to be a lot of slush in the budget. Yeah, well, I, I think mm. the our current president is in an ideal situation in that he does ask. He does have the mandate of the population. Mm -hmm. He's declared himself to be anti-corruption and he's no nonsense. So maybe uh, we could start with, you know, with him pushing everybody else to account for whatever it is that they're spending for. Yeah, that's a, that's a very good idea. Well, that's just, as you said, we could, we could go on and on for, for quite a while and we'll probably do this again sometime. But that's about all the time we have for this evening. Um, it's been an interesting month. It's been an interesting beginning to the year. And I think probably a lot of us are hoping that, you know, in the months to come, it may not be as interesting as it has been, or at least be interesting in a different way than what we've had to put up with. But we're making it, and the economy is still holding on, and, you know, people are still getting business done. We're just facing a few challenges. and. Uh, you know, hopefully we will figure it out as we go along and not have such a bad year, but we'll see. And about this time next month, we're going to probably come back here and talk about how March was so much more exciting than February was, <laughs> the way things are going. I'd like to thank my guest, my good friend, George Chua, the president of the Philippine Federation of Industries and Bayan Motors, which is your source for the, the uh, Bayek automobiles, which if you haven't seen one, I'm, I'm going to give him a plug here because I've driven these things and they're great. Uh, they're they're wonder, wonderful vehicles and you should check it out. Um, I'm Ben Kritz and this has been Eye on Business. Thank you for joining me and I'll see you next week. <laughs>